stream is so toothless, but it's real Christ ripping people till it chooses. Can join your free miss and lodge, and they'll show you what they see. Say your soul for false security. This is who's the first top deception. All these cult symbols are the worship of erections. All this evil my control comes from the mother church that messed with the research. Call it Jesuit, and I'm calling it. Now they're gonna have a fit. My purpose is to seek the real Jesus. To call out the wolf preacher. Cause we're living in the land of the sea. Full history on the beat. In this land of lost souls under demon control. People looking left right blind to the robbing of the soul. Demons in the shadows trying to teach you Jesus ain't got no true divinity. They're just trying to corrupt me and turn into the land of the sea. Home of the slave, sell your place, ripping people break away from the chains. They're using to control your mind. We can stop them. I sure ain't gonna let them get mine. So let's pop them. In the heat of this crime, we can see God's design as he exposes all this. Let's witness Jesus in the clouds. True soldiers rep this. Jesus protect us. I said amen. Amen. God bless you, YouTube. Pastor George here. It's been at least five days since I've been able to post. Uh, we had a scare with the internet where we weren't able to use the internet. That was the problem. Uh, just Satan attacking me. Satan was attacking big time. We lost the use of the internet. Now, I'm back. God bless you guys. Uh, my prayers go out to Wake Us 777, uh, Creation 78. We pray that you, stay, that you all stay strong in the Lord and that you know when to shake the dust of your feet in victory from Jesus. We also pray for Ben Tolles, the 18-year-old Adam Center teen who is still in ICU. Nine days later, the mother is very frustrated and asking God why. Um, he's, but he's stable now, but they can't reduce the medication. Um, that's been the problem with that. Um, I've got over here on my 
uh, entertainment center a candle lit, and I've been praying all morning. I'll go through every so often. Mind the mess of my house, guys. But you see it over there on the entertainment center, the candle's lit. That there is to, in prayer for Ben Tolls, a single candle lit. It's a single candle lit for Ben, and I've been leaving it lit most of the day. I had to put it out earlier as I left, and then come back. I forgot to blow it out, which was not a good thing. It could have led to a problem, but um, that candle's lit for, still for Ben. I've uh, been praying over that, praying for God, and I just keep that vigil going while I'm here for Ben Tolls because he's not out of the woods yet. <clears throat> Even though we had an awesome time at that candlelighting ceremony, we had the candlelight vigil. That was amazing. Over 300 people came to that vigil as Pastor Mona, Ben Tolls' pastor, lifted her hands up to, to God and said, we lift you now, Ben. We, Lord, we lift Ben now up to you to be cleansed and to be brought back from the brink of death. The rain came down, and it, the amazing part about what's that is that it gave us chills, and we felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost just come down on that whole session, and it just shows the power of God and God's glory. And periodically, as people were talking and crying over Ben and explaining what was going on and how they were related to Ben or how close they were to Ben, we um, we just see every so often just a hint of rain or a periodic sprinkle came down and it got our attention it got our attention that, that God was crying with us and it showed the personal in my belief the personal side of Christ and the personal side of God's anointing on us and that he hurts right along with us when one of us suffers Ben's struggle is a testimony the kid Honestly, should have been dead a year ago. Honestly, uh, there was the tumor was took up his whole lung, was covering his whole lung cavity, but God kept him alive for a testimony. In my belief, that's a testimony that he's still surviving. He's surviving now, but he's struggling, and he's had several reports on his Facebook page, Ben Tolls, and that's T O W L E S, and he's also on Caring Bridge. I just want to get that little bit of housekeeping out of the way before. We open our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 15 through 18. And that's today's Bible study that I'm going to get to. It says, as we do it, I'm going to ask that the Lord, we all bow our heads and we actually ask the Lord for guidance in the word. Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now that you anoint the words of the speaker, Lord, and you anoint the words that are coming through that they are your words, not mine. Lord, I ask that you bless anyone that has the chance to read this seed that's being sowed, Lord. I ask that you anoint my lips, that it's not evil and corruption that comes out of our lips, but only from you, Lord. We ask that you bless others as you forgive us our trespasses. Lord, and even those we for, ask that you forgive us for those trespasses we not even know we're, we're doing. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you bless and anoint today. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Verse 15 of chapter 15 of Jeremiah. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me, and visit me, and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not in away, take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me joy, the joy, excuse me, and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name. O Lord, God of hosts. I sat not in the assembly of mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuses, which refuses to be healed? Refuseth to be healed? Wilt thou be altogether unto me as a liar and as waters that fail? Hmm. We're going to have to go further, or this is out of context. Verse 19, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, If thou return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me, and if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt 
be as my mouth. Let them return unto me, but return not unto them. Return not thou unto them. And I'll make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's go to the first part where Jeremiah is crying out here in verse 15. And he cries out to God to remember him and to visit him. And that means to come down to him and just talk to him and to deliver him from. Jeremiah is crying out that he be delivered from his persecutors <clears throat> and did not make him suffer any more rebuke because he feels he has suffered enough. He took and observed the word and he took in the word and he observed it and he lives it wholeheartedly. This is what he's crying out to God. This is Jeremiah's prayer to God that he's <clears throat> suffered enough rebuke, he feels. He feels he can't take no more. And a lot of people don't realize that. We as people are suffering that same kind of rebuke. But we don't understand that once we come out of the evil, we're not to return to that evil. We're not supposed to go back into it. We are supposed to go forward and not backwards. Uh, everybody knows the old song, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. This falls in that line, children of God. This falls in that line that we keep returning. And God promises if we don't return, he will revenge us of our persecutors. But we gotta, we not only gotta return, we gotta not return, but we gotta pull the precious from the vial. That means save those that we can save through our planting of the seed daily. If we can't pull the vial, pull them the precious from the vial, and pull the people out of the world, then we are no better than the world. And so by planting seeds, we tend to we tend to pull the precious from the vial through planting the seed. Let them make their own decision. We're not forcing anybody. God says don't force it upon them. If they refuse to accept the word of Christ and they refuse to accept the word of the Lord, then shake your dust off. Then the house is not worthy and you shake the dust from your feet. You plant the seed, let it grow. Let God do the watering. Let Jesus reap the harvest. Our job is done. We did what God required us to do and that's to preach to all nations, repent for the day of the Lord is at hand. If we can't ourselves be first partaker of that lesson, then we cannot teach or even give anybody else that message. But he says right there, if thou return, then that's verse 19. I will bring thee again and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. He means teaching them. And as a messenger of God, that's our job. Like God, he says, to be like me. If you take the precious from the vial, then you're like the Lord. That's what he's saying here, all inclusive. Let them return unto thee, but not unto them. Okay, I paraphrase that a little bit for an example, because a lot of people don't understand. He's saying, come out of Babylon. Oh, come out of Babylon. And children of God, you keep forgetting. You're in a lost battle there. Step out. Stand on the ramparts and call the others out. This is Babylon that they're talking about in the Revelations. This day and age is the Babylon they speak of in Revelations. And a lot of people don't want. But listen to what he says. God's promise is right here for you. In verse 20, he says, And I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall. They, and they shall fight against thee. But they shall not prevail against thee. Yeah, they're going to fight against you. But they're not going to prevail because you receive the victory in the Lord. Because you're speaking the truth. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And that's all in verse 20. 
Then you go to 21, which is the final promise here that I want to get at here. He says, and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. May the Lord have a rich blessing on the word we received in Jesus' name. Amen. That we, we tend to forget this. And if I go over here to Matthew, and right here is the commandment. You want to know how to pull them out of the, out of the world? You want to know how to call them out of Babylon? Right here. Go to Matthew chapter 10. And you're going to see it here in what Jesus sent the, the 12 apostles. These 12 Jesus, verse 5, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, and you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely you give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses nor script your journeys, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his me. And this goes back to the shaking the dust from your feet. That's that sermon that I preached a week ago. And this is confirmation of that sermon. I mean, I can keep doing this all day long. I can keep confirming the same message that God's given me in this Bible. And people don't realize that this Bible is the Word of God. And it's the word of God that's going to lead you to victory. But not if you don't use it. Use your gifts. God gave some people the gift of song and the gift of music and the artistry. And you know, a lot of people say, well, the rap is the work of the devil and the invention of the devil. If God anointed you to speak in that kind of word to get your people's attention, then how is it be of the devil? Man uses it for the devil's work, but who's the great divine creator? God is. Seven days. Six days it took him to create this earth, create people. On the seventh day he rested. Created a savior for us. He sent down his son from God, from heaven to be our savior. So you want divine power. And you know, we can keep going into repeating that about is the house worthy. But there's no reason to. This just confirms that. And it's funny, is God has a way of doing that, that I can preach the same sermon. And there's an old joke, and I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. Uh, so this is back in the 1800s. This pastor come from a far city on a wagon, spent months getting there on his, message, on his mission to save as many as he could. He happens to be asked to preach at a small little country church in the middle of nowhere, a little podunk um, village of settling the settlement and he goes in and he preaches the Sunday about giving and love after a sermon everybody's thank you pastor thank you that was an amazing sermon are you gonna be here next week oh yeah I got something to teach you again I got more to teach you yeah I'll be here for a couple weeks at least well second next week comes by and again the pastor preaches the same message about giving and love People are like, okay, maybe he has a reason for this. I don't know. Can you preach again next week? Yeah, are you going to have something different? Maybe. Don't know yet. Third week comes along. Same message, giving and love. Now the elders of the church are bothered by this. And they're trying to scratch their head. Well, they go ahead and as the sermon ends, <coughs> they all approach the pastor and the reverend, the visiting reverend, and they go, well, reverend, we've heard that message three times already. Why ain't you picking something new? Is there something wrong that you don't have any other message? Or are you just stuck on that? The reverend goes, oh, you got it all wrong. You're not understanding why that message is being preached. Some of you aren't getting it. Some of you are not getting the message. That we need to come out of Babylon and call out to the lost in Babylon. So God's showing me that that message is not being reached by people. So he keeps giving confirmation of that message. Just like that pastor kept repeating giving and love. It's the same thing. If we keep calling people out of Babylon, it's the message that God's giving. And when you hear several people calling you out of Babylon and you're not getting it, it's confirmation. Can I get an amen? 
A lot of people don't understand God's work is immensely focused on your salvation. He wants you to be a part of it. He wants you to come out of Babylon. Remember, it's not us. We're just humans. We're infallible. We're going to make mistakes. We're not infallible. God is infallible. He is omniscient, omnipresent. And there's nothing like him. And there never will be. He is our creator. And his son, Jesus Christ, that came down to be crucified for your sins and my sins, wants nothing better than you to be home with us. So God bless you. Have a great day. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his will always. In Jesus' name, amen.